Louise Harrington and this is my tiny garden which is in the north side of Cork City um, in a terrace um, and I suppose what I learned um, is you can do quite a bit with even a very small space with wildlife in mind and as a, a multi-use space as well for our family. Out the back here it's, it's quite dark, it's north facing and we're surrounded by houses on all sides. What I learned when I moved in here first is you need to get to know your space. You learn where the light is, you learn what the soil is like and figure out what will grow there. There's a space down there is really dark. The only thing I could get to grow there was ferns and that's how dark it is. I realised during lockdown that feeding the birds all year round was, um, was, was really beneficial. I think the number of birds we have come into our garden and um, it gave us an awful lot of pleasure too looking around and seeing what was out there. So I try to have um, basically plenty of flowers for pollinators um, and have a succession as well. Like in the front, there's uh, flowers that come up very early spring and then, you know, have things that just continuously bloom to attract um, pollinators. It's lovely, it brings me a lot of joy to see uh, butterflies coming around my house and my garden. This base here is higher, it's, it's, it's drier than the compost. So there's logs and bits of wood there, which I think attracts other insects. I always keep nasturtions for, um, for uh, the cabbage butterflies. And I learned about that in the allotments to have them as a sacrificial plant so they'd stop eating my um, brassicas. I pick up the leaf litter and I keep it for like two years and then I mix up my warm compost to make, um, you know, growing medium for the um, for the potted plants to try not to use peat. I liked how you said in your front garden you've done a lot for pollinators as well and even down here with the nasturtiums as well the bees are very active here um, and the butterflies love them as well and you can see there's evidence of the caterpillars eating them so there's obviously being used and then with the nettles you have a little spot uh, here as well for nettles which is great because a lot of people don't like nettles but you you can see in a small garden you can make um, a small space for nettles um, even if it's out of the way and nettles are just great for uh, butterflies so uh, there is some where the nettles have rolled up and there's some eggs in there so there's some butterflies eggs there. So you have your um, logan breeze and raspberries you're sharing them with uh, the birds as well and you have your apple trees which are great for like uh, thrushes and blackcaps they love the apples. The ivy is great for everything really but especially a lot for birds and um, because they provide nesting habitat and shelter. If you offer the physical space to, to the plants and to the animals, all the bugs and everything, you're, they're gradually going to start to take hold in the garden, they're gradually going to build up their own little ecosystems. So you might bring in things, you might bring in your own plants and they're directly going to be feeding things. But the physical space that those species creates invites other things to come and and, and, and take hold and then kind of strengthen other interactions that they're having with species. And if your neighbours start doing the same thing, then that's, you're just, you're doubling or tripling the space that all of those kind of interactions can happen in. At any time of the year, you're going to have some kind of food for the, for the bees and the hoverflies and the butterflies and all, and all the different things that could be floating around, because there's always something in, in flower. And even then when things, when plant isn't in flower, it still has a benefit, you know, it still has a benefit in it being a food plant for the for the grubs or for the, the caterpillars of the, the butterflies and the moths that are going around. Dead flowers will further give nutrients into the soil. So anything that you that you give just has a rolling benefit at different times of the year. And it's just a it's a matter of I think concentrating on what animals, what insects and birds, what they what they need and then thinking about the plants and think about the physical space that you're creating and then just giving them that. Mm.